In this Maya tutorial, we're going to see the difference between importing a scene file and referencing a scene file. Both are important in your workflows, but they do slightly different things. First, let's import a scene file. Go to File, then select Import. Here we can see different files in our scenes folder. I'm going to select this quad ball rig made earlier. We have some options. We can group it, which is a good idea to put everything in a group for organization purposes, especially if your scene will have multiple objects. So I'll click this. We can leave preserve references on. And then this is an empty scene, so it's going to override this current scene with whatever the settings for frame rate and animation range are in our imported file. But sometimes you may have a scene already made with animation, so you have some choices. You can maintain the original frame rate of your referenced file or override to match the source and you can combine the playback range to include the source, or you can override to match the source so it'll shorten the animation or increase the animation, or you can maintain the original in the current scene that you're importing into. So these are all choices for you. Then we have namespace options. When you're working on a Maya project, it can become very complicated and have lots of nodes and textures and different files, and especially if you're working with a team, so it's important to have namespace conventions. But for a small project, we probably do not need to use the default use selected namespace as parent and add new namespace. So this will make the file name longer in the outliner. We will only have a few number of objects in our project, so we can merge into selected namespace and rename incoming objects that match. That means that files with the same name will have numbers at the end of them. So this is good and it cuts down on the number of namespaces. I'm gonna click import. When we see our file come in, if I try to click on it, remember that our ball rig is not clickable. So we have to come over to the group and we can select the main controller. We can also move it as a group and this will move both the main controller and this place 3D texture. We can press W and that will move it to the side. I'm going to press F to frame. So now we can see everything here. If we don't want to see this place 3D texture, we can click on it. And then in our channel box editor, we can change the visibility to off. And then it's no longer seen here. We can also right click on it and we can hide in the outliner. If we wanna see that again, we can go show and then show all. We should rename our group. I'm gonna double click this and I'm gonna rename this to imported ball rig. That way we'll know the difference between this ball rig and the referenced ball rig. If I wanna see the textures, I can press six and I can see the texture that was on our original rig. Now let's bring in a reference scene of the same file. I'm gonna to go to File, Create Reference, select the quad ball rig, then under General Options, we have some options that are different from Import. Deferred means that you won't load the object in. It will be part of the file, but it won't be loaded. This is helpful if you have a very large file that you're not quite ready to use yet, but you definitely know you want to reference. We don't want to defer it. Lock means that you can't edit anything. So there could be something that you've already done all the animation on or something that's just in the background and you don't want it to change. You can lock it right there. In this case, we don't want to lock it. We can also group it, which is a good idea to group everything together, especially with referenced files. It'll keep everything uh, nice and clean. We can give it a group name. So right here I have referenced ball rig. Locator is on by default, but for our small projects, we don't need the locator node. For the shared referenced option, sometimes you may be using, if you use these shared reference objects for display layers and shading networks, you can reuse textures that have the same file name instead of having to have multiple textures loaded at the same time. Then of course we want to use namespaces and for our small project, we will not select the default. We'll go ahead and select merge into selected namespace and rename incoming objects that match. Once we do this, we can click reference. And at first glance, everything looks the same. If we open up the group, we see the main controller in the place 3D texture. We can change the visibility of that to off so we don't see it. Then we can hide it in the outliner. But then we also get this quad ball rig reference node. We can leave this in the outliner or hide it. If you look inside, it's the exact same thing that's in our actual ball rig. So when I select this main controller, I can move the ball. Also, if I select here, I can move the ball. 
So now let's see the difference between an imported file and a referenced file. Remember, this ball here is the referenced ball, and then this one is the imported. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Then I'm going to go File, Open Scene, and I'm going to open up the quad ball. So here is our quad ball scene. We can change things about this quad ball, and they'll be reflected in the referenced object, but they will not be reflected in the imported object. Let's go ahead and select the main controller, and then we'll open up the hypershade, and I'm just going to right click and assign material to selection. Then I'm going to save this file, and I'm going to go File, Open Scene, and we'll go back to our import versus reference scene. And here, we can see that our reference file updated with our changes. This is great. We could have done animation and different things with this file, and everything would automatically update. This can be very convenient, and it keeps your file sizes low. The imported file did not update. That's because once it's imported, it does not have a link to the previous file. This can be advantageous because if you lose the reference file, the reference will not work, but the imported file will still work. So depending on your workflow and how your project is going, you can either import or reference. To demonstrate this, I'm going to go to the folder of my scenes. Here is my default Maya project with our scenes. If I change this quad ball rig, I right click and I rename it. Quad ball rig renamed. And then I close my files and I go back to Maya. Everything seems fine. If I move this around, everything seems fine. And then if I save it, everything seems fine. You're like, what's the problem? Watch what happens if I open the scene again. I'm going to open the scene, import versus reference. So this is the exact same scene that I have opened now. And I just saved the scene. If I click open, suddenly we have reference file not found. That's because we don't have this quad ball rig file with the same name anymore. So Maya can't find it. What we can do is browse, go to our scenes folder, and then tell it this is actually the file, and then open. So now the reference is relinked. You have to be very careful with referenced files that you don't rename them or move them out of place because Maya won't be able to find them and everything will be broken. That's both an advantage and a disadvantage about reference files, whereas the imported file is always there because it's now part of this scene. Hopefully that clears up how you can use imported versus referenced files in your animation projects in Maya.